think so. Hmm. Perfect. Okay, so welcome everybody. I am super happy that uh, today I will facilitate um, the meeting. So before uh, going on with the agenda, I would like uh, to first ask who would like to be the facilitator for next week. We enter the awkward silence phase. <laughs> it's like it's like just on cue. <laughs> I mean, I'm always happy to do it. So you can put me down, Christy. Okay. Great. Perfect. Um, so and also in case that you still haven't added your name as the attendees, please feel free to do it. And also feel free to add your favorite ice cream flavor since it's summer and it's super hot. <laughs> I need to know what yours is, Christy. I need to look that up. Um, that's such a Della. It's a very Italianish uh like a flavor. I think that it has to do like it, it has a lot of milk and uh vanilla it's i'm not yeah it looks like that. chocolate chips and vanilla gelato yes <laughs> great so the first item in the agenda today is the badging updates um would you like um elizabeth to um give us some information how it's going and how was the training session Sure. Um, yeah, we had a training session and we added four new reviewers to our team, which is amazing. Very, very happy about that. Um, usually, if history repeats itself, we will get a very large influx of applications all at once around August or maybe early September. So um, hopefully by that time, all of those uh, new reviewers will feel acclimated and um, we, we can jump in then when that when that wave comes and if the wave doesn't come we're still ready anyway so it's totally fine um we just had our dei badging meeting uh, a little bit before this one so um yeah uh things are moving right along we're going to be um switching over to um so project badging i'll let matt talk about that a little bit but um they're using a form or going to be using a form that is uh, way easier for our applicants to fill out. It's just going to be an issue template because um, GitHub has that functionality of having a template that is actually a form. And so we're going to be using that because right now the process is a little bit unwieldy for applicants. They have to do some copy and pasting and um, it's kind of convoluted and it's very difficult to update that form for uh, on our side as well. So um, that's going to be happening soon. We're also going to be adding in um, some of the changes uh, based on the recent metrics that were released, especially around event accessibility. So we'll be asking a bunch of questions around that. And uh, what else? I think that's roughly it. Oh, and the, of course, the uh, event badge reviewer appreciation event is happening on June 16th. Uh, I think Katie said we had 22 people signed up for that. So if there are any reviewers on this call that are not uh, signed up for that and want to be, uh, we would love to have you there for sure. Um, so we can recognize you and show our appreciation to you. Um, so uh, there's the link there to register and um, also to get more information about it. So yeah, I think that's roughly it did i miss anything anybody with that was on that meeting earlier i think that's it in a nutshell no that's good um with respect to project badging we're really kind of getting that going now based on conversations we've had here uh so i really honestly at this point it's about um, finalizing that issue template that elizabeth had talked about for projects um <laughs> I think we still need to come up with a way to badge projects that are in a GitHub org, though. Like, I don't think we have that sort of out yet. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I so I my thought was is that we could just ask for something at like a community repo level. I mean, we have to have there's a there's the DEI.md file mm -hmm. that would be for a project. 
And that just needs to reside somewhere in the organizational structure. Right. And then there should be a code of conduct that would probably be at the organization that just needs to reside somewhere. I can't imagine they'd have different codes of conduct across repositories. Would we have uh, like use the dot GitHub folder inside of an org to well, do this stuff? Yeah, I don't particularly care where it resides, I don't think, as long as it's available to the community members. So like we use a community folder, which would be a pretty logical place to put something like the DEI.md file mm -hmm. to me, but it, I don't know that every project would necessarily have that folder. <laughs> you seem stunned, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I mean, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how we will indicate that a project is badged if it's not at the level that the project is viewing their information. Like if we do it at the repo level, I think it's, I think it's less clear because most of these projects have multiple repos. So, so I mean, you, I yeah, you've mentioned, I think we have to do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so. I think we should try to figure out how to do it with the dot GitHub directory. Well, like for the event badging, we give them the code and they can right. put it wherever they want. So if it's on their website or their repo, like wherever they want. So maybe something like that, where they could put it on their website or their, their org level. Okay. Maybe yeah, may something like that. I don't know. So maybe we, um, we have them either indicate when they're applying that if they're trying to badge a GitHub organization or they're trying to badge a single repo. And based on that, we give them a badge that indicates that the org is badged, or it just indicates that the repo is badged, depending what they did. That would work. But why, why would an org be bad? Why would a, so we're badging projects. Yeah. I mean, like chaos project, it's one project, right? With many repos in it. And so we would want to badge the chaos project. We wouldn't yep. want to badge each repo within it. So what is the place where we would ask people to do the badging at that level? And the dot GitHub directory is the only thing that I'm, or the dot GitHub repo is the only thing I'm aware of that is a org level repository. Thing. Yeah, that, that's that's all. And I I think Elizabeth's suggestion that the way we badge it, we just give them a, a file to put the badge wherever they want. I think we can just indicate in the badge that we give them what is badged. I mean, I think most people are going to want to badge a whole project and then the badge can say that. But if in some cases, individuals decide to badge one repo within a GitHub org, uh, we can have the badge indicate that that would solve this as well as the dot GitHub directory. I mean, either path makes it clear. But I think if we go into the badging program with some with ambiguity around exactly what people are badging, I, I think it'll become confusing. And we'll end up with requests to badge all the repos in some orgs. So it sounds like there are two things going on here then. One is it's the end of the badging process. So that's one. So we issue the badge. Right. Let me start at the beginning, I guess. So the first is an, a project is asking to be badged. Right. And so we are asking for, I'll go down to the list here um sandwich all the things sandwich <laughs> <laughs> approximately these things right yeah okay so um and then um like maybe, where are you suggesting so uh, i would suggest like a, like in a dot github repo so i think i think when we create the the issue template for this that's how we're doing this right we guess we have them indicate if you know, we just have some brief instructions asking if they're badging one repo within an org or if they wish to badge the entire project that the org represents. And that's just that could be just an answer to the question. And then we ask them which repo is your community repo where you would keep these kinds of project badges. You know, or where do you keep these kinds of project badges um, well, in your project? But but because that so, would tell us where to look for these other at these other things as well this 
sounds like it's getting way too complicated for our reviewers. They are badging a project, a badge, a project has a contributing document, a project has like a DEI.MD document. Each repo will not have a DEI.MD document in every one of these things. Right. So we're only badging a, a project on one of these platforms. Like on the platform, it's set up as a project. Chaos is set up as a project with sub projects, but you're just badging the project. Okay. And if that's the case, then the only project level repository is the GitHub repository at the org level. So like with chaos, there's not one repository that represents everything. Although we could maybe argue the community repository does that. Do you hear? Uh, I don't want to do. make it complicated. I just I don't, I don't want to end up having somebody submit badging applications for every repo in a giant org. So I, I I do think Sean is making a uh, a really important point here. Uh, for example, a a project like Hyperledger is this it's it's a massive organization with many different pieces of software and and projects that are sub projects that are embedded within the within the organization so i i think uh just saying that we're badging hyperledger at the organization level i don't i don't think that would be appropriate i do think it's something more akin to what sean was saying where we ask them to identify the main repo that were that we would be badging or that that main piece of software within the hyperledger project that we're badging i think that this gets covered because a, a major high org level is not going to have a dei.md and a contributing.md that is comprehensive enough to answer all of these questions and specific enough to be useful for their users. They're gonna have to be the sub projects for like more specific projects that are happening. And each of those, if they have these comprehensive parts that are gonna let them get the badge <clears throat> that weeds out the who we need to get it to. Okay. Uh, that works for me. I think we just, we proceed with the risk that like somebody like Hyperledger is gonna submit every repo in their org. And we just, we, instead of worrying about it, we just deal with it when it happens. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I just, I just, I'm, my primary concern was like somebody submitting 30 repos from a, a single GitHub org. Um, maybe that won't even, won't ever happen. But are, are you suggesting when they submit 30, we don't ask for repos. So we ask for these documents. Right, which exists in a repo, don't do they not? Right, so are you suggesting that it's possible that they would say our code of conduct is located in this repo, this repo, this repo, this repo, yeah. this repo, and our contributing guidelines are located in this repo, this repo, this repo, like? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, I'm, I'm, my concern is they'd actually submit 30 applications, one for each repo, but I'm borrowing trouble there maybe that won't happen. They would need to have 30 different DEI.MD documents then and 30 different ways they say how they're going <clears> to <throat> take care of burnout and 30 ways they're going to do this because we're not going to badge the same document. Like they have to be individual documents. So that's going to be a lot of extra work for them. And if they yeah. want to do that much extra work. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I may be borrowing trouble here. So I, I wanted folks to th think about it, but it sounds like we've thought about it enough and we can just press forward treating a project like, you know, you're going to fill in the blanks and designate a repo and that's where we're going to badge it and we'll worry, so you, we'll worry about what actually happens when people start submitting things, I think, is probably a better approach at this point instead so of using, carrying this on. <laughs> using the, the chaos example, it could, it's fairly feasible to badge chaos, auger, and grimoire lab as separate entities. 
Uh, so they, they they function differently. The the uh, the way contributions are made is different. The uh, the organizational structure is different. Uh, and I and I do think we would see that in in other organizations as well. So is the assumption that uh, all of the projects within an organization are organized and managed in the same way? Uh, if so, then I suppose badging, badging at the organizational level would make sense. Uh, but if there's any deviation in the way those projects are governed, uh, then, then I think it does kind of become an issue of maybe we should take a closer look or ask them specifically what project within this organization are you wanting us to badge? Yeah, I, I think I've made the mistake of trying to think down the road too far, uh, anticipating behavior. And um, I think we don't know what people are going to do. So if we just proceed, and maybe one question is, are you badging a project or are you just badging an individual repo? Um, in, in this is project or, badging. Yeah, so. well, yeah. <clears throat> so it is, I agree, it's project badging. And I think we should direct people Then maybe the maybe the fix is simply to have in the template that um, which repository holds your community assets. Hey, that's. And yeah, then we'll just take the info there and the problem solved. I'm trying to get past this this thorny bush that I created, which I did not intend to create. Maybe remove community from that language and refer to it as project. Just the. Uh... Uh, to focus in on project assets rather than organization or community assets. I was just going to add that there might be an organization within these various projects, like in the Drupal community, there is like a DEI group with their own repo. So it might be, this might sort itself out in terms of the groups that are working on this within that community or that project where where they would know how to s s narrow this down to where where it could happen mm -hmm. could you say that again i didn't i was typing and sure so like in the like in the drupal the drupal community there is a a dei group that's like unaffiliated with the drupal association and they have their own repo and i think i've seen other communities as well where there is like a DEI group within that organization so that might help the badging process because there might be a specific group within that organization that might have their own repo or some other mechanism so that would then then that would eliminate the like you're, in other words there there might be like an obvious interface to each project or community that is the people that are doing DEI type work that's all Okay. So what if, based on this conversation as part of the application, do you know how like for events, one of the questions on the application we ask is like, are you an open source project? <laughs> and they just have to click yes or no. Like it's just a yes, no question. What if we ask something like the, the submitted, it's this, the, the submitted documents, the readme, the contributing, they're applicable to all corners of the project. You see what I'm saying? That like the code of conduct that you're submitting is applicable across the entire project. The DEI.md file that you're submitting is applicable across the entire project. The license that you're submitting or the licenses that you're submitting are applicable across the entire project. You know what I mean? It's just a yes, it's just a yes, no question. Would that solve help solve things, Sean? Yeah, I mean, I think any any as long as we're giving people, as long as we're asking the question about what they're badging and what the scope of their badging is and where the documents are as separate items, I think we're fine. I want to keep it simple, and I I I, I prevented us from doing that by asking the question, <laughs> and I am just regretting it and wanting to move on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I let me let me play around with this. The, the submitted documents are like in Matthew for the Drupal project. Like, is there a code of conduct that's that covers the entire 
Drupal project, for example. Yeah, that's a really tricky thing because we have like a specific code of conduct that can that covers the Drupal like community events, but it's a different sort of code of conduct that sure. um, that's like within the working with one another, but there's like in, in an issue queue, but then there's like a different sort of like set of guidelines that would be applicable to this as well. That would be like outside of that too. Like <laughs> so if we took the event code of conduct out, cause that I agree. Sometimes there are two codes of conduct, kind of one at the event level, you know, or the meetup level. Is there a code of conduct that is kind of universal within Drupal? Like, well, see, like each, like say there's a Drupal camp, you know, uh, local versions, we have our okay. own local codes of conduct and we, you can't force everyone that creates their, or a lot of communities like gotcha. Drupal wouldn't force their local organizations to follow by necessarily the, some broader top down sort of co code of conduct. So that's why we like it just gets tricky because yes, there is like the community code of conduct and that should be applicable, but a lot of these things get sorted out in local communities on a, okay. on a different case. Whereas there's like a community working group for the entire project where people are violating codes of conduct, okay. but that's why it's like, I, I, I have no, I honestly have no idea how you would badge a community as big as the Drupal community. I mean, I really I don't, saying, I don't even know what that would mean other than like, we're trying, we have, we have these various codes. We're trying to enforce them in different places. It's just really it, complex. Would it begin to make more sense in this example? If to like Kevin and Sean's point, there were subsets of the Drupal community that went through the still not maybe. I mean, that would be a lot of work, but I could see like a local Drupal community wanting to do this as well. Okay. Okay. Um, well, to Sean's point, we might just have to, we might press on and see how it plays. Yeah. Out. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah that's might be the best way to go. Yeah. I, I, I don't think you should feel bad about bringing this up though. Cause if we, if we don't have an answer to this question, I don't know that we can really say that we know what we're badging right we we have to understand the the bounds of the the organization or the project uh so and maybe maybe we'll figure it out as we go but i i do think it's something we need to continue to think about i think like we we kind of did answer if we ask them exactly what they're what they're intending us to badge which is like this piece of your community or these repos or whatever however that pans out if they tell us what they want a badge then we can compare <clears throat> and give them a badge for that part maybe yeah i think that's a different way of saying what i was saying before where this might sort itself out in the people that you interface with yeah they, they will know they will know their own purview and can talk about what is what they can badge <laughs> where they have jurisdiction or however you want to put it yeah okay all right okay, so press on, press forward sorry um great so i think that uh we can go to the next topic i yes. edit here the burnout and the mental health session actually it was just for as a reminder because we also uh, discussed that in our previous meeting. Um, if you'd like to attend, you can join us on June uh, 17th. And after that, the other topic is mentorship updates um, okay. and how are things going? I just wondered if I could say something quick about the mental health session before we sure. move on. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Um, I just I was gonna say I I put together that agenda and I kind of pieced it together from the notes and what not. I was mostly responding to the email that said, <laughs> "Do you want help?" and and I was directed here. So I just I I don't know. I I don't. This doesn't even all make sense to me. But I put that together. So if anyone else has insight into this, um, f feedback or changes are are welcome because I just took an outline, turned it into some slides and 
there you go. So I just wanted to throw that out. Thank you, Matthew. Perfect. So if someone wants to add something at uh, Matthew's document, feel free to do that. And we move to the next topic about mentorships. Updates. Yeah, I just put this in there. I just wanted to see how things are going. Elizabeth, I know that you have had some engagement here and just if anybody needs anything or mentors or mentees, we're just we're entering the season of a lot of mentorship going on between summer of code season of docs and outreachy. I will just say outreach is going great. Precious is awesome. Yes, kick, kick butt, awesome. As a side note, I still haven't been billed. You what? You haven't still been haven't what? Build. Oh, from outreachy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I, I don't know either. Don't ask me to explain. No, that. <laughs> what's going on, Elizabeth? Why not? <laughs> They're a small organization, right? So yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, it take some time. And we do have the funds. I mean, it's not, I'm not concerned about being able to pay the bill. No, it's, <laughs> I'm concerned that they may never ask for it for their own sake. I just haven't seen the bill. That's all. <laughs> and just, I guess maybe it's part like you haven't seen anything, Elizabeth or Sean. No. Like, okay. As soon as you do, just let me know. Because we got the money. Yeah. So that's it. Great. So we move to the next topic. Yes. Keep us going. Uh, it, chaos Africa. <laughs> I've heard very good stuff about this topic, so I'm looking forward to the update. So, so is Ruth, are you on right now? I don't know. Ah, there you are, Ruth. Yep, Do you want to you wanna talk about this a little bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we are starting up Chaos Africa uh, and it's really exciting and i'm so pumped about it so i'm going to be leading efforts on you know starting up uh chaos africa and mainly we are going to be focusing on you know creating initiatives that or metrics that kind of like focuses on um open source community challenges here in africa right we'll be learning and you know creating initiatives and metrics around that and would also be contributing to the chaos project at large. You know, we have a lot of things here, a lot of wonderful things here in chaos to would also be contributing to our software, documentation, design, and all of that stuff. So while we also create like initiatives around focusing around uh, open source community challenges here, um, we will also contribute to chaos at large. And yeah, we'll be sharing kind of have a doc, um, a strategy doc. I don't know if someone can put it in there quickly. But yeah, we would also be sharing um, part of, as we as we go, uh, as we go, right? It's going to be like a sharing process where we kind of share what we learn or challenges we discover via different uh, social media. We're going to be using social media, Twitter space. We've talked about Twitter spaces, um, even um, written content as well, um, maybe through the blog and conference, sharing on conferences and events. And yeah, so it's really nice to start that up. And, you know, we all already have like um, so many contributors from Africa and chaos already. And um, it's um, going to be nice for those folks to participate and we get other contributors. So not just the folks that are currently contributing to chaos, but we also get other participants in other open source communities. I think Justin uh, mentioned, um, he knows about this Cameroon group. So it's kind of like expanding beyond Nigeria as well um, and other focusing on other countries. So yeah, I'm excited to start that off. Uh, we'll be having the first meeting next week. I'm still trying to make arrangements for that, but it will be on the it will be on the calendar, the calendar, the chaos calendar. So if you have that added, you definitely see the meeting. It's going to be happening like 2 p.m. um West African time and call for participation. African folks are already 
um, you know, participating in chaos in the call, you can hit me up on DM on Slack. I'm still with Fikiga, so you can share your thoughts with me. And yeah, it's going to be a community effort and not just mine. So yeah, excited to start that off. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Earl. The strategy document is here, Ruth. Somebody put it in there. So okay, great. So you could look and you know make suggestions or yeah, drop your thoughts as well. Um on the doc. If you never get to that doc, you could say it. Awesome. Perfect. Does anyone have any questions, comments for us? Um, Elizabeth, could you tweet, maybe put together a tweet with Ruth for announcing this? Yeah, I wasn't sure what day. Ruth, do you want to do it like yeah. this week? Yeah, this week. Um, I have that already just to set up that form we talked about on the call. So once that is all set up, I'd you know, ping you. Yeah, just let me know um, and we can coordinate. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And through our super investigative efforts, we found out who grabbed Chaos Africa on Twitter. <laughs> I was just trying to make sure it didn't go anywhere because it had been lingering out there for a long time, but it, I got sidetracked and forgot to tell anyone I did that. So I literally went apologies. to go and grab it and I'm like, it is taken already like how did that happen i was just looking out for us and forgot to tell everyone sorry <laughs> yeah because literally on the call sean we were like nobody take this except for matt or ruth yeah so i didn't <laughs> we hear what we want to hear so sorry <laughs> you're um, fine you're it was and so we do we have chaos africa and we have chaos underscore africa i'll shut down chaos underscore africa so we're just going to go with chaos africa that's correct ruth that's what you wanted to do Oh yeah, I was muted. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that... Okay. Cool. Have you grabbed Chaos Asia Pacific as well? I have not. So, what about Asia Pacific? Who has taken that over? Well, um, nobody has taken it over at, at the moment. So for a while we had, well, not for a while, we currently have the Asia Pacific call, which is, you know, uh, whatever, every two weeks on Wednesdays. And just, I was thinking that we could just like, it's a bit of just a rebranding instead of just thinking about it as a call, really recognizing the efforts um, that, oh, Shoya, you're on. So the efforts that Shoya has done for example, over the last year in China, running the, the meetups um, and helping with social in China. I mean, that's a really excellent thing. And so kind of doing a more formal recognition through Chaos Asia Pacific, that's not just <laughs> embedded in a phone call or a Zoom call, right? And so really recognizing that work. And Kevin, I was thinking like as the website redesign happens, we might want to think about like how we recognize Chaos Africa on the website, as well as Chaos Asia Pacific on the website. I'm not sure what that would mean, but it was just a thought. Yeah, just I'm, not sure. I'm not sure either. Maybe we can discuss, I'll add that to the agenda uh, for the upcoming web, web content meeting. Okay. It would, it would be nice to, it would be nice to have a a full web page dedicated to them. Yeah. Uh, each of them, at the very least. Uh, okay. Cool. <clears throat> um, and then I, I, I think it would also be good to have an identified person for Chaos Asia Pacific. Um, kind of as Ruth is, is happy to lead efforts Chaos Africa. So if you have an interest in kind of being that person, <laughs> not looking at anybody, but if you have an interest in being that person. <laughs> I would be super excited to take I was lead. hoping so, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's just, um, uh, you say I, I started the Chaos, 
Tales Cast China uh, a few months ago, but it's just not. I don't. I don't have that. Um, this the output is not so stable. So sometimes I'm, I I, I don't feel very proud of it because, um. But I um. I'm excited about the uh, rebranding or um, like have an official grant grant thing because uh, this is also a problem when I started the Chaos Cast China because um, um, I was um, kind of concerned if uh, like this is a Chaos brand and how where is the limit to uh, spread it or to use it. So I think this is great. Yeah, if you're doing chaos things, I don't think there's a hard limit. Uh, good question. Uh, what is what is this? Uh, what would we call this lead person? Would this be the community manager for Chaos Asia Pacific? Would this be I don't, I don't community know. manager for Chaos Africa? Yeah, Ruth and I kind of had that. Remember that conversation, Ruth? Like early on, like the title name. I don't think we've landed on it quite yet, but should, certainly should carry a, a title. I don't know if people have thoughts. You had mentioned a few there. I think just something that would indicate affiliation is sufficient. And maybe some kind of um, recognition on the, the website if we do have their own page, just so people kind of have a, yeah. a point of contact as well like I agree with. to go to. Yeah, I agree with that. And then Shoya, um, so it's a good question, Kevin. Shoya also is chaos Asia Pacific the right term? I asked this for Ruth as well. Or is chaos China more appropriate? For what you would like to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, first of all, we um, like gather the people in a WeChat group. Uh, and uh, have that um, social media on WeChat. We name it Chaoscast China, um, but I think it would be um, even better to name it Chaos Asia Pacific. If in the future we can involve okay. folks in yeah India, especially India and uh, even Japan, Korean. Okay. To this perfect. Okay, perfect. That sounds great. And thank you again. Awesome. So many good news, good news is recently <laughs> in communities. Um, we can jump on to the next topic, matrix review. This should be short, just it's continuing to happen. So um, I think we have a few metrics that we have done a review on and kind of finalized. So thanks for the folks that provided comments. Um, and I'm the person who's kind of assigned to take a look yeah. at the EI metrics, and I'll just I did that. Yeah. I did a pull request for the uh, family friendliness one yep. based on my to do for last time, so that's in there somewhere. I will take a look at those async, but thank you okay. for that, and thank you also, Kevin. I know you had done some reviews as well, the reviews of the reviews. So, that's it. Great. The other thing, we have agenda update, no meetings, the last two weeks of June, which means that next week will be the last meeting for this month. That's right. Okay. It's a uh, two, two, one is just uh, OSSNA is that third week of June and many of us are gone to that. So sometimes it's hard to coordinate meetings and then the second week is the week kind of leading into the US 4th of July. It's not 4th of July is on a Monday, is that right? And so that just takes us into that weekend, which is also kind of a week that we normally take off. I think OSSNA is like drastically at a drastically different time than it is in the has been in the past. Am I right on that? Wasn't it normally in Oh, I guess you're muted, Sean, if you're talking. I don't know who keeps muting me or <laughs> if it's uh anyway um stop that it's uh it's always it had always been in the fall and they moved it to the summer but they started in 2020 
So it's never actually happened in the summer. Wow. So it, this is the first time we're actually experiencing the change that they made two years ago. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And I was the one that muted you because you okay. were wrestling papers. Oh, and okay. It was very Fair. loud. <laughs> was it loud? Okay, sorry about yes. that. <laughs> Just uh, regarding the taking a break from, from meetings for a couple of weeks, for if there are any students part of Google Summer of Code or Google Summer of Docs or, or Outreachy on here. Yeah. Uh, mentorship will continue during this time. Uh, so uh, contact your mentors to schedule meetings. For sure. The meetings can occur. <laughs> we're just, we're, we're going to. Just yeah. the routine scheduled meetings are going to stop. Yeah. So thank you for that, Kevin. Awesome. And the last thing uh, to be discussed for the meeting today is the focus area updates. Well, we will not be able to solve this in three minutes. So basically <laughs> we had a, a really productive conversation last night on the metrics model meeting about how we think about focus areas across the chaos project as a whole. Um, and so I think we should just defer this conversation because it's a conversation that's going to need to be uh, kind of brought up within each of the working groups as to how we think about mm -hmm. focus areas and then the relationship between focus areas and metrics and the relationship between focus areas and metrics models. So I think that's pretty important. Um, but we're now down to two minutes and there's no <laughs> possible way <laughs> this conversation could happen. Yeah. In two minutes, so. You don't have to be RB, Elizabeth, because we're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. So I think that this was the meeting for this week. If anybody has any questions or comments, I think that we have only two minutes left. If not, we can call this a meeting and we'll see each other again next week. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Oh, the precious, you're sticking around, right? Did Sean leave? Uh, yeah. <laughs>